extra skin. Here's actually a schwannoma in the skin. And I'll tell you this, that I've seen a lot of schwannomas, but I do not often see schwannomas in the dermis or even the subcutis, to be quite honest. When I see them in the, near the skin, they are almost always centered in the subcutis like this and maybe pushing up into the dermis. I can count on one hand the number of purely intradermal schwannomas I have ever seen in a, a soft tissue fellowship and 10 years of practicing as a dermpath and soft tissue pathologist. Schwannomas are exceptionally rare in the dermis. So uh, just to know that if you think that something's a schwannoma and it looks like a schwannoma kind of, and it's in the dermis only, it could be, but the much more likely thing is it's a palisaded encapsulated neuroma, which would be this right here. And uh, we'll come back to that in a second, but let me just show you this case first. You can see here there's cystic change, hemorrhage, hypercellular and hypocellular areas, a nice capsule, all the stuff that I told you. The capsule is actually, if you did a stain for perineurial marker like EMA or GLUT1 or Clodin1, usually there is perineuria mixed with fibrosis. That's what makes the capsule. Because schwannomas arise inside of a small or a large nerve. They, they arise in a nerve and then grow and push their way outward and the, cap, the perineurium expands and then fibrosis and creates the capsule. That's kind of the idea of how this works. And so you'll often find multi-layered perineurial cells in the capsule of a schwannoma. At least most of the times when I, I don't usually do those stains routinely, but I've done it for teaching and it usually works pretty nicely. So just be aware of that. And there's, there's a little nicer varicae bodies here. They're not perfect still, but they're pretty good. And then look at the fibrin and the sclerosis around the dilated vessels. That is super helpful for schwannoma. And I know the last case, the big case didn't have it, but it, it's, it's present in most schwannomas to some degree. So I find the sclerotic and or perivascular fibrin to be really helpful. Sometimes you get weird, bizarre changes, a reactive change, I, I believe, of the endothelial cells in these vessels too. And it can look really weird. And the pericytes around them can look kind of weird too. And here's a better look at those, kind of a cluster of varicae bodies. They're all clumped up together. Um, uh, and so this is nice classic schwannoma now and a good, a good rare example that's occurring near the skin. All right, now just briefly, palisaded encapsulated neuroma or solitary circumscribed neuroma. Despite the name, it's not usually beautifully encapsulated. It is often circumscribed, agree, but it doesn't usually have a capsule like that or like that, okay? So that's one thing. It's usually centered in the dermis. It sometimes can be multinodular or plexiform. Plexiform palisade encapsulated neuroma is a, a well-described variant, and it's important to not confuse that with plexiform neurofibroma, which of course uh, is basically sine qua non for, um, uh, for neurofibromatosis type one. And plexiform palisade encapsulated neuroma has no association with NF1, although this weird, bizarre thing about it, it has been reported at least a few times. If you have a plexiform palisade encapsulated neuroma in the hand, the acral skin, um, is sometimes associated with Cowden syndrome. So I have seen, I think, two different patients that were kids that had that, and I, I never did get the follow-up, but I recommended that they uh, get a genetic counseling just to make sure there was no other signs of Cowden syndrome. Uh, kind of an unusual, weird thing. Uh, palisade encapsulated neuroma is usually on the face, but in the times I see them off of the face, the next most common site I see palisade encapsulated neuroma is the acral skin, usually the fingers. So kind of strange. I don't know why that happens. I wouldn't have called this one plexiform personally. I mean, it does branch a little, but I would have just called this palisade encapsulated neuroma. The main difference here the, the, from schwannoma is the capsule, for one thing, like we said, is not really there. And even though there's palisading, it's usually much more vague and, and kind of not like nice varicae bodies. Although, like I just told you, schwannomas sometimes don't have that, the beautiful varicae bodies. And the best thing is these crack-like clefting artifact around these fascicles of spindle Schwann cells. So that's a really helpful thing. And if you really want, you can do like a neurofilament stain and there tend to be more neurofilament components present in these neuromas uh, and less in a schwannoma, but it's not a perfect way to tell them apart. I think Chris Fletcher did a study on that back in the the early 90s, if I recall, and found that it's not like really 100%. Schwannomas, for one thing, can get neural uh, nerve twigs entrapped in them because they arise from a nerve, and so sometimes they kind of pull along some of those little nerve bundles and branches, and so you can have some areas with some neurofilament. And I've also seen some of these that didn't have very abundant neurofilament in the in the uh, palisade encapsulated neuroma. So I don't routinely do it. It also doesn't usually matter, right? Schwannoma of the skin versus palisade encapsulated neuroma. But I'll just tell you, junior, junior people watching this who may have to take a test one day, if you think it's a dermal schwannoma on a test, 
the answer should that you should guess is palisaded and capsulated neuroma, okay? Because dermal schwannoma is really, really, really rare. So there you go. You can see kind of vague palisades down there. And there's the nice clefting uh, artifact. And uh, seeing these wrap around a nerve, a normal nerve, perineural growth is totally fine. It's not perineural invasion. It's just arising from the nerve because it's a nerve sheath tumor. And nerve sheath tumors are allowed to be wrapped around nerves and coming off of nerves because that's what they grow from. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that discussion. I really enjoy nerve sheath tumors.